I had to go away because I had to focus on something, and it's sort of like the last book. It, it just it becomes a huge project, much bigger even than I estimated, and uh, I knew it was going to be pretty big. I'm gonna. I know that you have the camera set up here, but I'm gonna pick up these books first for a second here. So, so my first book I kind of started out small, and this was uh, Synchronized Universe Volume One. And it collects about a dozen different paranormal phenomena that I had already collected good data for at the time I wrote it. And that was kind of a succinct way to write the first part. Um, thank you. <clears throat> I got started on this whole process because I discovered remote viewing in the 1980s. And I was a conventionally educated physicist with dreams of doing unified field theory. But, you know, no one ever told me how the universe really works. And then I began discovering that there are some secrets that they didn't tell us in grad school. And I began discovering remote viewing, for example, which uh, people were able to go into a sealed room and send their mind out and read documents halfway around the world in a safe somewhere, which is completely impossible by our laws of physics. But they were doing it. And that woke me up to the idea that there were some laws of physics that I was missing, okay? And so I've been trying to collect ever since then, what else does the universe do that they didn't tell me about? And so the first volume there was paranormal phenomena, ESP, levitation, things like that, out of body, etc. The second book was an effort to figure out, okay, how does it work? What is the force that's missing? that will help us get closer to explaining what goes on in the world. And what I discovered is that what the Chinese call qi, uh, what has been called orgon uh, by Wilhelm Reich, and uh, what the Russians call torsion, is one of those missing forces. It's a very important missing force, not in our Western physics. Um, it took me 800 pages <laughs> to, to kind of dis describe describe the force, and uh, I found the best evidence I could find for it, and some, a little bit of the theory. Um, and so when a Qigong master, for example, reaches out his hand and causes a dish six feet away to be pulled toward him, okay, or, or when there are healers who work routinely in China with patients who are thousands of miles away, and the healer works inside a cave and never leaves the cave. Everything comes to him telepathically. All the healing goes out through his special energy. There are people who do this. Um, and so in this country, we've been discovering in the past 20 years how to do some of this energy healing and long distance healing. Um, but still, our Western science is mute about what the force is that makes that possible. So that's what life force is all about. I found out in the middle of writing it that the Russians have already figured this out. And um, so they have some science behind it. That's why I spent a good deal of time trying to decipher. Then after that was finished, um, I thought, okay, well, subtle energy, that's really an important thing. That's what I've been studying, basically, with torsion. Um, what about the soul? Is the soul subtle energy? What is the soul? Um, how, do we, how do we, what goes on after we die? What continues? How is it possible for anything to go on? after the body's dead. And I began investigating that. And each level of more subtle phenomena that you go to, it becomes a little harder because we don't have the technology to measure. We don't know how to measure it. So you have to put more circumstantial evidence into it because you don't have as many hard readings, as hard experiments. So it became this book, which is just finished. Uh, it's called Science of the Soul, The Afterlife and the Shift. Uh, I've just gone kind of on on sale tonight. I'll be selling some here. I'm going to take your orders for them here. Uh, my website is still being upgraded to include this book. So, um, in fact, I, I put a sign-up sheet around for for membership. Did you see that one? I'm not sure where that is. Yeah, just please, please keep circulating it. And uh, that'll, that'll be a, a little newsletter um, to stay in touch with everyone. And I also have a, a, a sign-up sheet for orders, which you can pass around if you'd like to place orders tonight. Um, the Science of the Soul, 
what I found is that the evidence for it is more diffuse. There's more hit with lots of different sources and look at different types of evidence and try to put it all together to see what you come up with. Uh, there is some hard evidence for it, but to me the most convincing thing is that different people's accounts looked at from very different points of view come up with the same picture. So I get correlation about 10 different ways of looking at the afterlife and what's the evidence for it. Um, so that's the essence of this book. And, and there is some theory that comes for those who are scientifically minded and want to get the answer right away. Um, I think to me the answer is that our present physics tells you the quantum physics has, explains everything. They've got to leave it that way. They know that most people don't know quantum physics. So it's kind of safe for them to say that. And they're not going to be called out for it. But I think the real answer is that our quantum physics is set up so you can't look at nature beyond a certain degree of accuracy. About, about the width of a proton, 10 to the minus 15 meters, that's about as small as most people look. Uh, the energies start to get very large if you try to look at smaller distances than that. So most people just say, well, it, nothing could be going on at the very small scales, and they stop looking. Uh, physicists kind of agree that the smallest distance that makes any sense is about 20 orders of magnitude smaller than that. It's called the Planck length. That's 10 to the minus 35 or 33 meters. It's a very, very tiny. And so you have this huge gap of distances between the atomic scale and this ultimate limit and most physicists just say, that's terra incognita. We don't know what's down there, and we don't care, we're not going to look, and no one can... And, and they're kind of, that's mostly where most physicists believe it. And I think what I'm finding is that that is where the afterlife is. That's where the higher dimensions of consciousness are, the higher planes uh, that you go to when you're not in the physical anymore. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, so let me, let me just go through the slideshow a little bit here and uh <coughs>